G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and welcome to another workshop update video. We've got big plans here for 2022 and I just thought I'd bring you up to speed with some of the developments that you'll be seeing on the channel over the rest of the year. So if you want to find out more, as always, you know exactly what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, but most importantly, stay tuned. So we've got the transmission here out of the Stage 1 or the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 and it is as many of you know it's a LT95 uh, gearbox but there's a few or well, transmission there's a few sort of nuances or differences between this and the standard I guess LT95 suffix A that's used in the Range Rover uh, particularly the high range low range selector here. Um, I didn't do a video in our servicing your 4x4 playlist pulling this out as of yet um, because I wasn't able to go into the depth of detail that I want, wanted to. Um, I envisaged that I'd be able to pull this gearbox out of the top of the vehicle. So basically taking the seat box out which is over here and then just simply pulling it straight out as you do with pretty much any series Land Rover. However, because of the size of the transmission tunnel here, uh, it wasn't actually possible. So luckily I've got a very awesome and helpful neighbor who's got a two post hoist and I was actually able to take it out through the bottom or the, the guts of the vehicle. Now, as I've explained on the channel, this one is locked in second gear, which is very disappointing, but such as life, that's what happens. Uh, so I am embarking on actually rebuilding this entire transmission myself. I've never done this before, but I figure this will make some compelling content uh, for the channel, probably over the next 12 months or so, because I'm not in any great rush or hurry to do it. I want to do it right. On the subject of LT95 gearboxes, we better move into the Landy Cave and I'll tell you what's happening with the Parenti over the next 12 months because there's some big developments coming your way. So the Parenti's done a lot of work in 2021 and particularly as many of you know it was the vehicle that was used to drive around the southwest of WA which was a good I think couple thousand kilometres. No problems whatsoever. Knock on wood. But one of the things that sort of came about last year was the uh, synchro cones or the synchromesh cone in second gear or whatever you want to call them, synchros. Basically it's gone um, and so if I get the vehicle just rolling forward very slowly I can change gear otherwise I need to double clutch. And this might not seem like the end of the world but <clears throat> Um, I like to be quite fastidious with my maintenance and if it's meant to do something in particular and it doesn't do it then it needs to be fixed. So I've contacted a company in Perth, Western Australia called I think Top Gear Transmissions and basically all they do is transmission and differential rebuilds. Now I did want to do the rebuild myself but this is a, a working vehicle and I can't really afford to have it off the road in, in pieces for 12 months while I try and figure out how to do it. So I'm just going to get the professionals in and get them to rebuild the transmission. Many of you might say, well, why don't you just replace the synchros? Well, if you go into that much effort, I figure you might as well just rebuild the whole lot and then you know it's a nice, solid unit and you don't have to worry about it. So that's going to be coming uh, out 
so there'll be a few servicing your 4x4 episodes on that no doubt. Um, I am still trying to track down and locate the uh, PDO kit that I've actually got for this vehicle, so a Thompson PDO winch along with a PDO unit to actually go on the rear of the transmission and along with all the linkages. So that will be happening over the next few months. But while this is off the road, hopefully something else is going to be on the road and I'm going to talk about that next. So keep watching. <coughs> so while the print is going to be taking a bit of a break, I finally heard back in regards to the motor in the Series 3, the newly rebuilt engine which we had a few problems with. It was burning a lot of oil which I mentioned in a video on the channel. Um, I'm not going to go into what's been found to be the culprit in regards to the engine. You'll have to click on that subscribe button down below and obviously watch this space as I've got a video coming out explaining exactly what uh, the culprit is meant to be. Uh, whether it is or it's not, time will tell. But the motor will be going back in. Hopefully all is well in the world. The Series 3 will be back on the road again. So that's going to be great because we've got a heap of content uh, to be shot on the Series 3. Um, as many of you have commented, it doesn't pop up very often in our YouTube videos and that's because it's always being worked on. Uh, but this is the last big chapter in the Series 3's evolution here at C uh, Seriously Series. And so finally, once this is done, um, you know, there'll be a few extra refinements on the vehicle itself over the years. But other than that, it's pretty much as good as it's going to get. So this is going to, going to be going to a four-wheel drive festival in the Wheat Belt in June hopefully if I can get the motor back in time and we have got the Perth four wheel drive show which at this stage we're hoping to get along to but you know we'll see what happens down the track but there's something else coming your way in regards to a particular item that you tow behind one of these vehicles anyway we'll go out the back and I'll tell you a little bit more as to what's going on there in one of the upcoming servicing your 4x4 episodes I'm going to be doing some modifications to the number 5 trailer here which for those of you who don't know these trailers were originally I guess developed and designed to be towed behind the Land Rover Series 2A here in the Australian Army or in the Australian Army back in the day and also ended up being towed behind the Land Rover Parenti which is now just over here uh, what I'm looking at doing is sort of retrofitting an adapter to go from the NATO 12-pin plug to the more conventional civilian 7-pin plug that uh, some vehicles use over here in Western Australia. And this is of a rectangular design. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm heading off up into the Pilbara for about oh, three and a half weeks. And as much as it pains me to admit this, I'm not taking a Land Rover. No. I'm not taking a 79 series Land Cruiser either. I haven't won the lottery, just to put that out there. No, I'm going to be taking my uh, wife's car, which is a uh, Isuzu D-Max. So we're going to be taking that along, but the number five trailer will be coming along with us too to carry some of the camping gear. So it's not all bad, you know. But because it is a modern car and it's got a different hitch on it, I've had to get an adapter to fit into the Heyman, Heyman Reese uh, coupling on the rear, which has a plate, and then I've got a pintle hook attachment which I've actually fitted to it, and I'll go through that in greater detail in another video. But I'm going to take out two nuts here and fit a plate, and then put some kind of adaption here to go from a standard NATO plug to the seven pin plug. So I'll basically be able to take the actual, and hopefully I'm making sense, take the plug out and I'll be able to plug it in here. There'll be a plate to retain the socket. And then from that socket, there'll be your standard, I guess, um, seven core trailer wire 
that then goes down into your plug or your flat rectangular 7 pin plug that goes into your car. And that way when I don't need all that extra fruit I can just take out these two, take off these two nuts, take off the plate and all the rest, put that in the shed, put the nuts back on and it's back to normal. So that's my solution to it and we just got to find out whether it works. So that's sort of the big projects happening here at the moment. But anyway, we'll go back in the shed. So as you can see, a fair bit's going on. Uh, stage one will have a little bit more work done to it too. I'm endeavouring to take the motor out of it and give it a bit of an overhaul, looking at the injectors, the big end bearings, and obviously the front and rear main seal. It does also need a new clutch too. So plenty of work to be done there too. The Series 2 is running fine, the backbone of the operation you could say here at Seriously Series in WA, but obviously that will require a bit of TLC throughout the year also. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and if you are enjoying the videos here at Seriously Series then please do support us via Patreon by clicking on the Patreon icon that should pop up at the top right hand corner of your screen. If you're new to the channel and just trying to figure out who we are, what we do and all the rest then please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too and that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, I hope to see you in our next video.